Hey gang, it is James here with App Spy, and I'm playing Final Fantasy IX. Holy cow, this is a quite a big release for Square Enix because it's one of the big old premium Final Fantasy games that was originally released way back in 2000 on the PS1. You might have known, like, by looking at our channel recently, Square Enix have been gradually releasing their almost entire back catalogue of old JRPGs, including late last year Final Fantasy VII, which is obviously one of the big games that they released. One of the ones that really pushed the JRPG into like the Western mainstream. I mean, you'd had Final Fantasy VI or three uh, on the SNES and the Super Famicom, but prior to that, like it was a bit of a niche thing. Whereas Final Fantasy VII really captured everybody's imagination, certainly in the West. Uh, and suddenly, Final Fantasy became a big thing, bigger than it is even in Japan. Uh, over there, Dragon Quest is their big franchise. So. This is literally the very first battle scene of the entire thing. I'm going to use my attack command for Marcus. I hit attack. I'm going to hit the masked man. I'm just tapping on the screen to do so, obviously. I've been played on an iPhone 6 at the moment, just so you know. And this is the, the very first battle. Uh, initial impressions. Hey, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> They've smartened it up quite nicely from the original PS1 graphics. I'm, I'm impressed. I've not played this Final Fantasy. This is the only one, I think bar maybe two, that I haven't played. Uh, I did seven, I did eight, uh, ten is one of my favorites, the one that was released on the PS2 and has been HD remastered, uh, but I never did nine, and a lot of people claim that it's one of the best. No idea if it actually is or not, everyone claims that at least one of them. I'm sure there are some people defending Final Fantasy VIII, even though they're clearly wrong. But initially, the mechanics certainly seem similar, so I'm talking to this dude, Baku, my main character there, whose name is oh, Zen, something with Z, uh, that I didn't check properly. He's got a little tail, look. He's got a little tail on him. He's half mongoose or something. Bizarre. But it immediately feels like Final Fantasy, because you've got a blonde male protagonist, a band of three dudes. One of them's got a little, you know, bandana on, and they've all got spiky hair. And yeah, immediately we're in comfort zone here. So, I'm on a ship. Tantalus, the infamous brand of daring thieves, band of daring thieves, is heading to the kingdom of Alexandria. There was a great big old CGI cutscene, incidentally. Um, I, I, I saw Princess Garner. I didn't know we were supposed to capture her. I presumed we were going to save her. Perhaps this is a Final Fantasy VII thing where you go in and as terrorists uh, trying to blow stuff up and you look like you're the bad guy, but actually you're the good guy. Sin is suggesting we put on costumes. I want to be your canary the most popular play in Alexandria. Oh, they're going to put on a play and try and sneak in. Oh, so they're doing a Hamlet then. This is what Hamlet did. Puts on a play to weird everybody out. Oh man, don't worry about me. Okay, that'll be your cue. That's when I kidnap Queen Brahame or... No, I think we were supposed to kidnap Princess Garnet. So I'm going to say I hit the... There we go. Good stuff. We're on point. So, as I said, this is a PS1 game originally. Oh, back to the cutscene. Uh, which you can see because it's in 4x3 aspect ratio. It is a square-ish uh, view screen. So you'll see there are these grey bands going down the left and right of the screen. So rather than try and stretch it out uh, or zoom in on it to make it fill the iPhone screen, they've kept the original aspect ratio. Something which I actually approve of. I Unless you can do it well... Uh, and just, you know, broaden the view of the in-game engine. I don't like it when they try and compress it or squish it or zoom in because you tend to lose uh, chunks of the top and bottom of the screen. So that's a decision I approve of. This is back in the day when everything was pre-rendered CG cutscenes, of course, because you couldn't really do much with the in-game engine. Nowadays, we try as much as we can. I say we, I'm not making games. Game developers try as much as they can to render cutscenes and stuff in the in-game engine so that it looks a part of the world still. There's not that weird disconnect between this beautiful looking CGI glory uh, and then it cuts to the game and suddenly you're taking control of these like polyagonal weebles on a pre-rendered background and it doesn't look very good, frankly. Do I want to skip the movie? Uh, I think I will. Just for the sake of this, I'll skip past. Let's get to actual gameplay. We are going to be reviewing this game uh, very, very soon, incidentally, so don't worry. But being as this just came out on the App Store uh, like matter of 10 hours ago or something like that and we've got our hands on a code we thought it only fair we show you immediately what the game looks like because it's currently on sale on sale for i think 12 pounds 99 or 15 bucks ish 
Uh, but that is going to increase within a few days to a full £15 or $20. And for an iOS game, obviously that's quite a lot. I mean, it's not a lot for a game full stop. When this game was originally released on the PS1, it would have cost you £40 or 60 bucks. So, you know, it's not that much in the scheme of things. But people do get a bit funny about paying that much on mobile uh, in a world of free-to-play games and 99-cent apps and stuff. So... Obviously, we're going to try and tell you whether or not the remaster is any good and whether we think it's it's worth your time and your cash. The thing that I notice with these remasters, and it's the same with the Final Fantasy one, is when it comes to the 3D assets, so you've got the uh, characters themselves. If I bring him up to the front, you can see he's actually very nicely modelled. He looks all HD. Uh, all the kind of stuff you would do with a usual remaster. So anti-aliasing to stop the jagged edges looking all jaggy and just bringing everything up to a higher resolution. That all looks great. However, the thing that looks weird is the backgrounds. The backgrounds still are the original backgrounds. You can't really upscale them. Uh, and so as a result, hang on, let me get the hell out of here. They look slightly like incongruous with the foreground characters. So the foreground's all like high resolution and the background characters not so much. I should also point out, I can tap on the screen to move as well as using a virtual stick. So I can use the virtual stick by putting my finger down here. Oh, hello, talk to him. Wahaha! I hid three precious cards in a safe place. Oh, I'm going to have to go and stalk stuff. Look, shrimp, you need at least five cards if you want to play a game. Oh, so I've got a little card game system, which is so common now. I've been playing The Witcher 3, and everyone keeps asking me to play Gwent, that card game they have. You've got a ticket. Get it stamped at the ticket booth in the center of the arena. All right, let's go back to the center and see what we can find. Have you never played this? I am immediately at home, though. This is like old school, early 2000, late 90s Final Fantasy through and through. Funny characters, people saying gua ha 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 and mwa ha ha. Right. I like all these uh, conversation options, though. So, show ticket. What's shown today? Can I show a ticket? Do I have my ticket? I do. Amazing. Get it stamped. There's something odd about it. Another fake? What? I suppose it must be a fake. Because we're trying to sneak into the palace. Ooh, is he going to help me out? I got a goblin card. Fan card, skeleton card. Talk to Alleyway Jack to learn more about cards. Thank you. So does that mean I now have to, like, play him at cards and that will allow me to win a ticket? I'm wondering, is that a thing? Let's check out the environment. The three heroic knights of Pluto. Okay, fine. I wonder if I can go into any of these buildings. Yeah, I can. Ah, my first proper indoor shopkeep. Can we buy stuff? I don't want to play cards. Which sword to buy? Wish I had more money. Yes, tell me about it. I immediately noticed that the, the colours in this are a lot more kind of... Not Western RPG, but you know what I mean, where it's sort of sort of browns and greys and greens, whereas I've been playing Final Fantasy X a bunch recently as, as the remastered version on the PS4, and it's so bright, it's tropical uh, in comparison to this. Synthesis's wife is happy because he's been working for ages, good for him. Oh, let's see an alternative way out, wicked. Alright, let's go over here. So, uh, the other thing is I'm immediately taking control of a different character. So, this little dude in the, the wizard hat thing. I thought I was going to be controlling the blonde-haired dude with the tail all the way through. Clearly not. But, we're not going to get to see, like, a huge amount of the game. Obviously, it's massive because it's Final Fantasy and it goes on forever and ever. Uh, but what we're interested in here, just for this preliminary video, is how does it look? How does it play? What's the frame rate like? And what have they done with the remaster? I can say immediately that the touchscreen controls are just fine. They have made an effort with this one to convert it to touchscreen, unlike Final Fantasy VII. There's nothing through there. Where it was basically released almost like an emulator. All you had was a bunch of virtual controls laid over the top of the game. Uh, and they've made no effort to turn the existing, like, game stuff, the uh, heads-up display, into a touchscreen-friendly format. And it was awful. Whereas this, clearly, you can see here that they've got the arrow key, so you can move up and down. I can just swipe up, down, choo -choo -choo, like that. And during the battle scenes, I was tapping on the actual buttons to say, attack, whatever. And so that makes a lot more sense. 
So initial, initial impressions, like as you can see, the frame rate's really, really sharp and strong, so that's been handled well. The battle scene initially looked pretty good. Uh, I can't see any glaring errors with it so far. It just comes down to a case of whether you enjoy the game or not, and we'll have to find out more about that in the actual review video that will go up later. So brief, a brief, quick first look at the game. Uh, Final Fantasy IX, currently available on iPhone and iPad right now. £12, 15 bucks. we'll tell you more about it later. Thank you for watching.